Computers have gotten very interesting over the past few years. In 2020, Apple released the M1 Max and that absolutely shook the tech industry. But it's 2024 and three generations of chips have come out since then, so are M1 Max still worth it? Make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna give you some great recommendations on who should upgrade and who shouldn't. So the first thing to consider when looking at old Macs or new Macs is the form factor. Whenever Apple updates the form factor of a device, they hold on to that form factor for a very long time because they're producing millions and millions of of that one product and then in their refresh cycles, they're only doing small spec bumps inside that same chassis. So the internals will be different, but the externals will not. Now, one of my favorite devices is the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. It has three USB-C ports, a MagSafe, it's got an HDMI port and an SD card slot. Now, depending on what world you come from, whether it's the PC side or the Mac side, that's either a lot of connectivity or not very much at all. But I live daily in both of those worlds, so I'm totally fine with it. First, let's talk about the MagSafe power connector. If you're not aware of it, a few years ago, Apple did away with the MagSafe power connector and people were furious because they loved it. And people complained about it for years and in something that's not very Apple fashion, they ended up bringing it back on their new MacBook Pros. And people made a huge issue out of it for years and years. They finally got MagSafe back and then everybody started realizing that USB-C needs to be absolutely everywhere. So I love having MagSafe back, but if I'm honest, I might have preferred, and I didn't know it at the time, but I might have preferred having one more USB-C port than having that MagSafe back. Now that's a pretty hot topic right now, so if you would, please let me know in the comments below, do you prefer MagSafe or would you rather have one more USB-C port? But that wasn't the big upgrade that the MacBook Pro received. It actually got a new HDMI port and an SD card slot. Now an SD card slot might not mean much to you, but for somebody who does video day in and day out, I do photo every single day, it is so helpful to have that SD card reader because I'm never getting to a shoot shooting a bunch of photos or taking a bunch of videos and then realizing that I left my dongle at home. So this new SD card slot reader, it takes care of that, which is so helpful, but they decided not to go with the upgraded protocol of the UHS-2. That UHS-2 would be so much faster and for the price you're paying for these machines, why not? And in the like fashion, when they did the HDMI port on this, they didn't go with HDMI 2.1, they went with the old protocol. So super high refresh rate monitors can't be used with this MacBook Pro. Now, if you have a presentation with this HDMI port, it's gonna be totally fine for you, say you're an office worker. It is so helpful to show up at the office and not have that panic moment where you wonder if you forgot your dongle or not. And the last thing for form factor we need to talk about is the keyboard. The keyboard on these Macs, they used to be absolutely awful with the old butterfly switch in the Johnny Ive area. They since went with the scissor switch because the butterfly switch was awful. The new scissor switches feel awesome. I have had every keyboard under the sun. I love typing on these new MacBook Pros. And so if you type emails all day long, every day, you're gonna be completely satisfied with any Mac that comes after they switch from the butterfly switch to the new scissor switch. So if in your computing experience, you're really looking for connectivity or just a good typing experience, you do not need to go with brand new Macs. You can look to old Macs to fulfill that. But maybe your workflow is a little bit more intense and you're doing more than just typing or giving presentations. Maybe you need a Mac with a little bit more oomph. So the next question you need to ask with old Macs or new Macs, are old Macs powerful enough for your workflow? So the short answer is for 90% of people, the M1 line of Macs is going to be plenty fast for you. If you are an office worker, don't waste money on something that you're not gonna get the benefit of. In fact, if you're an office worker and you wanna find the quickest and cheapest way to get into the Mac ecosystem, I would go with the M1 Mac Mini. It's so incredibly cheap for how powerful of a computer you're getting. For example, checking emails, writing scripts, putting a new cover sheet on the TPS reports. So, Peter, what's happening? Ah. Uh... Now, are you going to go ahead and have those TPS reports for us this afternoon? No. And all that kind of work, I would not notice any difference at all between the brand new M3 Max MacBook Pro and the M1 MacBook Pro. And that was released all the way back in 2020. And this is true for students too. You're probably using the Google Suite or you're using Microsoft Office. You're not in need of super high powered Mac. As a student, you need to get the cheapest Mac that you can find because let's be honest, you can only eat so much ramen before you feel like you're a waste of a human life. But for those of you who have way higher needs in your computing processing than that. The good news is your company might have an upgrade path for you where you don't really need to worry about this. So make sure you look into that. But if you're a freelancer like I am sometimes, I can tell you, I still sometimes use the M1 Pro MacBook Pro and it edits video just fine. Yes, 
There are some times where it has little slowdowns here and there, but for the most part, it chugs along just fine. And then for those weird projects that are really heavy and really intense, you can run a proxy workflow. I know three or four years ago, everybody made a huge stink about proxy workflows and how terrible it is, and these new Macs are gonna get you out of that, but if it adds three or four years to the life of your computer, why not do it? If you're unfamiliar with what proxies are, it's where you make a low resolution version of the project you're working on, and then automatically your program just switches back to the high quality at the end of the project, and so it really is not a big deal at all. And that's only for video. I mean, if you're a photographer, you do not need heavy computing power. Go get that base model M1 Mac Mini and you'll be just fine. So the questions we've been answering, are new Macs different in form factor? No. And are old Macs powerful enough? For the most part, yes. So that leads me to my next question is, are they worth the price? When you're looking on the used market, I would give you a little word of warning. I would not go back to the Intel Macs. I would only go back as far as the M1 Mac because it is such a big bang for your buck product. Going back to Intel, you might save $100 or so on the used market, but it's just not going to be anywhere near the performance as you're gonna get. Now, the only caveat to that is unless you're doing something like a Plex server, then I would go with like an i3, something really, really old, like a 2015 i3. That should run your Plex server just fine. Hey, Editor John here, just had another thought. If your grandparents are looking for a new Mac or a Mac just to kind of like send email and stuff, they might be the perfect people for something like an old i3. At the same time, you might wanna just consider getting them an iPad because it is so simple to use an iPad, so grandparents also consider that. One thing to consider when buying used Macs is if you're going for something like an M2 MacBook, MacBook Pro, any of that, I would go to the refurbished store on the Apple website. That gives you a full year warranty where if anything goes wrong, they will completely cover it. And so you're gonna figure out pretty quick if your machine has any long-term problems. But anything older than the M2 chip, I would go with eBay. There's a lot of great prices. You can find M1 MacBook Pros for like $500, $600. And anything earlier than that, like the M1 chip, I would go to eBay for that because you're gonna find a, a great MacBook Pro for like five, six, seven hundred dollars. You can find Mac minis for like under four hundred dollars. So used Macs are definitely the way to go if you're on a budget. Now here's the good news all of the depreciation has already taken place. So if you buy this Mac used, and it's not really what you really want, you wanna go with a new Mac, you can sell it for the exact same price. And another great option, which is really interesting, are these headless MacBook Pros. It's where the screen has gotten a problem. So the screen detaches completely, and you've got just the body of the MacBook Pro, which kind of is like a Mac mini with a keyboard and a trackpad. And you can find those for 200 bucks. I only recommend those if you're gonna do like a home theater PC or like I said, some kind of server or something like that. They can be awesome for that for the price. Another idea is if your kid needs a homework computer, you can just buy a screen and one of those headless Macs and that should be good enough for them to do homework. Now in the process of all of this used Mac, new Mac purchasing, you do wanna find out what kind of RAM requirements you have. And if that interests you, go ahead and click this video right here. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one.